Hey everyone, it's Bathmetrics, and welcome to part five of my mini series about audio editing in Bitwig 3.2, the latest version. In this one, uh, we're going to talk about layered editing, how to how to look at layers of things together and work with them at the same time. Um, this one will be very short because there's not a lot to say about that, but it's the last thing to cover before we get into the the capstone of this series. The whole reason I'm doing this is because I really want to talk about working with acapellas. Um, so anyway, layered editing in a nutshell is simple. I just threw a bunch of samples in here, kind of roughly light them up, lined them up, already warped them so they look more or less on the grid. And um, the thing is, if you have a really huge project with like 60 tracks, 70 tracks, 40 tracks, 50 tracks, you know, they start running off the edge of your available workspace here. And you don't want to have to keep dragging tracks around or collapsing and expanding groups and stuff just to be able to see what's what um, and maybe align the timing of certain events with other events. So this is where layered editing can come in handy. And let's show you how this works. Let's say, for example, I'm working on this bass loop and I'm in track mode. And I want to compare the hits of this bass with the hits of my kick. In this case, you can see I've got a uh, halftime kick and snare pattern. The kick on the one, snare on the three. So that's halftime. Um, and uh, I've also got a layered clap on top of the snare. And I just want to double check some timing of, of these kick and snare elements against these bass hits. So rather than rearrange things here and try and make tracks bigger here and you know try and see everything up here in the arranger view this is what the layered editing mode is for and you can get to the layered editing mode in either track or clip mode doesn't matter so let's just go to clip mode to keep it a little well let's go to track mode first <laughs> um, you click this little sandwich thing and when you do that you get a mini list of all of the tracks in your project. Um, and the trick here is that you can pin certain tracks into a view or, or just see certain tracks together. Like right now, there's an outline around this bass track that I came in from. If I click a different track, remember how before I've said, this always stays in sync with whatever you click up here, but now it's not doing that. What's it doing? It's staying on that one orange track. And that's because here I have that one orange track selected, right? If I want to see one of these other tracks, I have to click this thing to now jump around to those different tracks. And let's see that again. If I un turn off layered mode and I just click a random clip, you can see that the focus is automatically shifting to my corresponding editing view down here. But as soon as I turn on layered editing and start clicking around on other clips, the only thing that changes is my position on the timeline to wherever my cursor was when I clicked, right? Like here I'm at one, here I'm at eight, right? And so it'll scroll completely off the edge of the screen and center 8.1 in my view over here. And I can't even see, I don't even know what clip I'm on anymore unless I look over here and I see this white outline around this clip and I go, oh, that's the clip that's selected in the multi-editor, the layered editor, okay? So this is tip number one. You, when you're in multi-layer mode, this is how you select clips. And then you may have to you know, manually manipulate the timeline to see what you want to see because this syncing between the editor and the arranger no longer exists when you're in this mode. So this can confuse you at first, right? Now the next question is, how do you see multiple clips at the same time? Let's do it. We're going to use control click and, sh uh, and shift click. First, we'll do shift click. We're currently looking at this green track right here. And I'm going to shift click on this one. And it shows me suddenly all four tracks. And it can only collapse them so far. So the fourth track is off the bottom of the screen. So a lot of times when you're working in this mode, you want to just stretch this way the hell up. And now you got this great multi-editor, right? And if I if I Control click this track here. Uh, actually, I can't unselect it that way. Yeah, there we go. No, but it's still selected. Interesting. Um, multi select appears to be a little funky, but the basic idea is if you want to see everything, shift select 
two extremes and it'll grab everything in between as well. And you can see this purple track, again, there's not enough room for the purple track. So I have to scroll wheel up and down to see that purple track. There's only room for so many tracks. I can make this even bigger, but that's about as big as I can make it, right? And then if you just click one track, you go back to a single track again, okay? Now, how you look at different tracks that are spread all over your project, because in a big project, this list is gonna be full and you're gonna have uh, groups and tracks inside groups and groups inside groups, and you're just gonna be able to traverse this like a file tree in your, in your file system explorer. But here's the trick, it's all about these thumbnails or these thumbtacks. So if I pin this track, and then I pin the kick, the snare, and the clap, right? I've got those ones there, and then this was already selected once, so let's just, let's get rid of all the selections, right? So if I go back and just click any one of the ones I have pinned, these just stay here. And then if I pick something that isn't pinned, like this yellow track, it'll add the yellow track in, in the same order that it appears in the list, right? So it just suddenly popped that yellow one in. If I uh, click away from it again, it'll go back to just the pinned tracks. If I unpin a track, it just goes away. So sometimes the easiest way to select things in this view isn't really by clicking here or control clicking to grab three different tracks. I mean, you can do that. But it can get a little confusing because then if you click on something else, everything goes away, right? So I find it personally easier to just go, you know, pin a track, pin a track, pin a track, pin a track, select one of the highlighted tracks. And now I'm only looking at the things that are pinned. And if I unpin a track and click somewhere else, it goes away, right? Right, if I pin that track, it comes back regardless of what's actually highlighted and selected here. So that's a little trick. Now, another thing you'll run into is sometimes your gestures and editing can potentially operate on multiple tracks at the same time. So if you want to lock a track against edits, like let's say I want to make sure this track doesn't change at all. I can padlock it and now it's kind of grayed out and I can no longer actually do anything here. I can't, I can't drag stretch markers. I can't drag that, the length in and out. If I unpadlock it though, I can start doing all my editing operations and gestures that I've shown you in other places. All right, shrink, stretch, et cetera. Let's control undo. So padlock is helpful to sort of lock things up but still be able to see them. And um, that's really the basics. Now, the only other thing to understand is that um, if everything is unpadlocked, right? And I want you to notice <clears throat> that the stretch marker over here is white. And um, this stretch marker is gray. That's because I have this track actually selected up here. So wherever this white rectangle is around is the track that's kind of actively selected for editing. Now I could go into another track and start doing things, but it'll work. But notice that the minute I touch this track and start editing it, the highlight jumps to that track. Now the white rectangle is around this green track. And if I were to grab this thing and move it a little bit, right? Now the rectangle is around this darker green track where this kick is. Uh, well, this is PHP, so what the hell just happened? It's staying on the kick, that's interesting. Uh, normally this selection follows whatever the last thing is you touched, but in this case, I guess not. Um, so I guess the, the main thing that's useful is you can come in here and do all kinds of stuff. Like uh, if I'm in stretch mode already, I could put a stretch marker here and drag this over. I could then put a, up here, um, ah, see, I do have to, yeah, there we go. Stretch marker and drag that over, come back over here, get close to an onset, that's what I was doing wrong. Drag that one over, come over here and do Alt and slide. Well, I can't slide it over because it's, it's the full extent of the audio event. So that's not a good example, but I could slide. And that's the full extent of the audio event. See, all these audio events are full size. 
If I were to zoom in a little bit though, and do something like this, I could, you know, slide the audio event for whatever stupid reason. Um, and the point is you can do all this multiple editing focused only on the tracks you want. You can lock certain tracks so you can't accidentally mess them up. And then the only other trick is, you know, where are the controls for the mode you're in? And they're all hiding in this button right here. Clips, audio events, all the same things we've been talking about for the last four or five videos. So depending on what you want to do, you change this button to a different mode and then all the same gestures and uh, capabilities that would have been available to you in that mode and from previous videos are available to you here. Like now I can shift onsets in all of these, right? I could take onsets and move them around or I could grab a, grab a group of onsets and delete them and so on all day long. Any specific tracks you want out of your entire project. And it's all with this little button right here. Turn that button off and everything just goes back to normal and you're no longer in a layered editing mode and everything goes back to being focused on whatever you click on or you know, double click to make it all come in and all the other tricks I've showed you in the other videos. So that's all there really is to say about layered editing. Uh, I guess I could mention MIDI tracks too. Let's put in a MIDI, sorry, let's put in a MIDI clip real quick. Control T because this isn't strictly audio editing, but it's kind of useful. So let's edit this MIDI clip. Actually, I remember I told you in one of the earlier videos, I prefer this mode for editing. Let's put in a couple notes, make that longer. Let's dupe that up here. Let's put it over here too. And we'll call that our clip, right? And it's kind of an ugly, great, did I put that on the master track? God damn it. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let's go back. Yeah, I put that on the master, didn't I? Let's just move it up here. All right, so we got, and let's get rid of you. Edit you one more time. All right, so I've got some MIDI notes in here. And um, let's go back to the small editor. So let's say I'm working on a MIDI track and I've double clicked, I'm looking at the whole clip. Uh, let's turn off this part so that I just, I'm only seeing the MIDI notes. And let's say I wanna line up these notes against some audio somewhere, like uh, let's say the audio in the symphony orchestra loop, right? So if I'm in the MIDI clip and I go into layered editing, now I have, a couple different buttons down here. This is the MIDI button saying show the note editor. This is the button that also shows the audio editor. Okay, and if I, um, it's, it's an either or situation, like you're in multi-layer mode, do you wanna work with audio by like turning on several audio clips? Let's make this bigger. Um, or do you want to work in MIDI mode and work with the MIDI editor, but then see some audio superimposed on top of this? So here's where this button comes in right here. This button is only visible when you're in MIDI mode. You're editing a MIDI clip. And if you click this, it gives you a drop down list of all your audio tracks. And if I pick something like the symphony orchestral loop, it will superimpose the orchestral loop, just that one behind my MIDI clips. And now I can like see, okay, well, I actually want this note to hit here. So it's a pretty busy loop. So <laughs> maybe not the best example, but you know, let's say for whatever, I wanted this note to coincide with this transient and I could zoom in really close and say, okay, I, I think the transient starts here, so let's actually put that note there and so on. So this is a useful mode and I can switch it to any other track like my kick and I can say, no, 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 I want this to hit with the kick or even more common, I want this MIDI note to come in slightly after the kick transient, like partway through the body, right? And so you could sit here and adjust all your note hits against the kick so that some fat bass line or something is a little bit out of the way of the kick and so on. So there's all these options, but it's the, the basic rule of thumb is it's um, 
multiple MIDI clips, and let's show you that too. So let's make another MIDI track, doop, doop. Let's just change the colors of these so it looks like they're different. Okay, and so now I'm in MIDI mode because I've got this MIDI button clicked, and I can see any one audio track behind whatever my MIDI is, but just like I did with the audio clips, I can thumbtack um, multiple different clips and see the problem is they're all the same exact note. So let's go, um, let's go actually move those off the beat a little bit, change them around. Let's go here, just move this. See, I hate working with the small editor. Let's move this here, let's shift this here, just to show you one, one simple example. And then if I come back here to the um, full editor, now we can see this purple track where I moved the notes are in a different place. Now, let's do it this way too. Let's grab the green notes here. Let's zoom in a little bit. Put that there. Let's put this one over here, right? So I can edit all of these clips at the same time independently. I could lock a clip so that I can't edit it. Like I can no longer edit the orange notes. I can't move them, but I can see them right, while I adjust other clips around them, I could decide I don't want to look at the green clip anymore. So it's just gone from my view now. I could unlock the orange clip and line it up with the purple clip and so on and so forth. And if I want to see audio behind this, uh, I can grab any waveform and superimpose it behind all the MIDI clips, but only one waveform at a time. Okay, so now, there, I've showed you everything there is to know about uh, multi-layer editing. See you in the next video. We're going to capstone it with uh, some tips and, trips for, tips and tricks for working with acapellas. That's the last, the last in the series. See you next time.